Welcome back to the farm, everybody, where a lot has changed. So, last week you guys saw episode 14, which was recorded way back at the beginning of September. I am now recording episode 15, but as I sit here, it is November 1st. Not only in the game, but in real life. So, I've been playing this game for two months since this last time I recorded a video for this series. You can see at the top we are now in year six. We are doing just fine money-wise. We made it through the 80s and we are into the 90s, but that's where we're going to stop. So this is going to be the last episode for this series, but don't worry, there's more, more coming. Um, there will be more series and more videos coming. So what I'm going to do to close this out is show you everything that's changed. You can see some of it if you're looking straight forward. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go into this menu and show you, just in case anybody doesn't believe me, that I have not been cheating this game at all. So there you see in July, we sold a load of bulls for $32,000. We had $1,800 in property income. Um, so we had a, a, a positive balance of $30,000 there. August, we had a property income of $2,000 and sold products of $7,400. Uh, for a profit of $10,000, September, we had a profit of $1,500. The sold products that you're seeing there is from the distillery and the brewery. Um, I got tired of hand-loading the semi every single month, so I just set those two factories to automatically sell their stock at the beginning of every month. So that's where we're at there. You look there in October, $323,000 in milk and $129,000 in sold products. That was a that was a combination of cheese and beer there. And then we just sold here at the beginning of November $11,000 worth of uh, whiskey and beer. So our total balance now is up to $724,000. Um, I'm going to walk out here um, because of one of the things we're going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and get the general started. Yes, that's right. New truck, the general. So we're going to go ahead and start him. You can see here I got a 38-foot uh, Dakota Hopper Bottom trailer. I got our milk tank and our reefer van over here for delivering the milk you'll notice the Quonset hut is gone. If you also noticed, the dairy barn is gone and the two implement sheds have been moved. We're going to go here and jump into our 1988 GMC Sierra 2500. And we're going to go over here. So, the dairy barn is gone, the slurry pit is gone, moved the implement sheds over here land roller is the same the mower is the same fertilizer spreader is the same the auger wagon is the same it is currently hooked up to the 4955 that needs a paint job but two new uh, additions here we have a 12 row case IH cyclo uh, 950 cyclo planner I had to go case IH it's one of the very few a non-green uh, pieces of equipment on the farm but I could not find any 80s or 90s era 12 row John Deere planters um, so I went with the case IH and then we have our John Deere 455 drill over here combine has been upgraded as well we still have the grain platform and the same eight row header but we now have an 8820 Titan 2 combine that we used for our harvest just this last year and the other machine shed is the same um, with the fuel tank moved to the other side. So let's go jump back into the pickup quick. Uh, for the property income that you saw on the sheet, that's coming from these. So these, wa these windmills that I have up are actually set to uh, produce income for the farm. So I have a couple of those up. So that's where that other income's going workshop over here is still the same only one tractor left in there and that is the uh, 620 still hanging out in the workshop garage and then if you go around here you'll see that the grain bins have been taken down and replaced with this grain leg 
system. Um, and right now, if I get out and look, if I can get this to pop up, we have 38,000 liters of barley, 68,000 liters of corn, and 24,000 liters of soybeans sitting in there waiting to either be used or sold. Um, you guys have seen in previous episodes how I made this grass field here bigger. Three large fields out there. One was soybeans, one was corn. One you can see out there is empty. That was going to be my barley field this year. What I've done is I started doing a rotation to where every year I left one field empty because the barley has to be planted in September, which is before the corn and soybeans can be harvested. So I, I kept one fallow field every year. I just, because I knew that this series is going to be ending, I didn't replant it this year. But the soybeans were right here, the corn and the fallow field were up there in the blank and the empty. And then you'll see where the, the barley field was up here uh, shortly. One other new piece of equipment on the farm right here. Um, the plow and the cultivator are the same. Slurry tank's the same, but we have a 4960. Another piece of equipment that signifies that we have made it to the 90s. The auxiliary fuel tank and weights on the front. Uh, also upgraded the baler, so we now have a John Deere 100 large square baler, a rake, the 40... 450 is now over here. He's been relegated to hauling the bales and running the baler. And then the bale shed right here. Um, you got uh, 12 straw bales hanging out in there. Here's here's the old trusty 4430. Um, it now has 27.6 hours on it. And I think if I go to my equipment menu, I can't remember if this shows... Um, yep, yeah, it's been used for 54 months. So we have the 4630, the 4840, the 4955, and the 4960 now are the four main tractors. We'll use that in a second. I'm going to do the morning chores here in a second, and that's, so let me actually go ahead and start that so it can, it's 50 degrees, but we'll go ahead and start it so it can warm up anyway. Yeah, I'm using the morning chores uh, to show you guys what has changed. Go around here, we still have this. Uh, put another fuel tank up here, uh, extra loader bucket there for when we need it. We'll go ahead and park the pickup here. Um, one other non-John Deere piece of equipment in here is our Heston mower. I actually went with this one. Um, because it's actually a mower conditioner so um, it actually mows and conditions so it comes out as hay so I no longer needed a tether that's why you only saw a rake over there so now I can just mow um, this should now I'm gonna jump in the 4340 now the 4840 get it started and we have a little bit of feed in the trailer left over from yesterday, um, but we should finish off all the hay and silage that we have in storage. Which is perfect ending for the farm here. Let's see what that gets us up to here. It gets us up to 64. I'm actually going to turn my menu back on just for a second here, just to make sure I don't overdo this. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I can put up to 30% straw in there. So I do have some straw in the hayloft that I was using to make the hay and the silage last. So I didn't have to cut the hay again. Uh, to speed up the process of finishing up this series. So we'll go ahead and dump some straw in here. Make sure we stop at 85%. So now <coughs> we go up here to the dairy barn. Uh, the cows are now taking almost 70,000 liters of food a day. So I've been feeding them twice a day. That's why there was a little bit left in the, the, the trailer. There's a straw bale in there that didn't disintegrate, interesting enough. 
So there you go, I, I topped it off. There's 7,000 liters left. So we're gonna go over here and feed the bulls. So what, another thing we've done is these two little calf pens right here off to the side. Um, so what I'm doing now is as the, as the heifers have calves, I will put them in these two little sheds right here until the previous year's um, yearlings are ready to be sold. And then after the previous year's yearlings are sold, I move them across. So the uh, calf barns are open there, and then you can see we have a few uh, bulls in there. Mm, not quite a year old, so not quite uh, ready to be sold yet. So that's what we've done here. And then you can see we have another grass field right here. And then you can see the, the large field up there in the distance that was the barley. So that's a lot of the changes that have been made to the farm. So now that the cows have been fed, we got to give them some straw. Go ahead and park this back in here and turn it off. go over here to my bale trigger and spawn three bales and jump in the 4630 and we'll go drop these in the cow barn for the heifers I guess if I put the camera in the right location, I can actually see what I'm doing. <coughs> so this is what um, a lot of the stuff that you don't see in a lot of my previous videos. I have to do this every morning, feed the cows and give them hay, and then the cow barn. Now I'm having to feed twice a day. Get, I'll go look because I can't remember how many heifers we have in there now, but we got some more. So, here that one spawned, but it didn't want to take the other one yet. So, let me let me jump out here and look because I don't remember off the top of my head. We've only been selling the bulls and keeping the heifers, so we we're at 58 now. But last year I sold off some of the cows uh, just because I couldn't keep up with the, the food and the milk. So we sold some of the cows, and then we sold off the bulls, but we still have 58 heifers in there producing for us. Get bale number two here. And these larger square bales, if you remember when I was doing the round bales at all, um, I can't remember if I showed that, but those were only 4,500 liters, so these Square barrels actually have twice as much material, um, so there's not as many of them, but they last longer, so that's always good. Go ahead and get this one in here. I don't know why that other one's not spawning, so we're going to try something quick. We're going to go in here, and we're going to turn on our super hand, super strength. We're just going to go in here and pick this thing up by hand and get it to spawn. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Come on. Jump the fence. Oh, come on. Sometimes it takes me a, a couple of tries to get my jump just right. It doesn't want to jump in today. There we go. So, we're, yeah, it shows that our, our, our straw is not quite full. So let's see if we can't move this around. It says there's only 88 liters left on this bale, but it is not wanting to take it at all. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but we'll go get our other one. Call it a day. Now I could buy, there's an option on here to buy straw choppers. Um, I can buy a straw chopper that would actually chop off the straw in and throw it in there which is a little bit more realistic than dropping a bale and it automatically spawning throughout the pen sometimes you just do what's easiest
drop this third bale in here. Which it won't spawn all the way because there's it's 9,000 liters and if you saw, yeah, there's only three that room for 3,000 more. So that is in there. Go park this tractor out of the way. And now we're gonna go back across and we're gonna go jump in the general. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off this video by taking a load of milk over to the dairy and then checking on both the distillery and the brewery because that's what I do almost every day. Um, I don't know that the dairy needs milk, but um, I had put an additional milk tank on the dairy barn. So I didn't show you that, but it holds over like 1.5 million liters of milk right now, which is a little unrealistic. But that's how we made so much money in October. I ended up selling um, six truckloads, which was 240,000 liters of milk. Um, that's where all, all of our money came from. Um, I'm pretty sure the dairy has plenty, but I'm going to take a load over there anyway. Mainly because I want I want you guys to hear this general um, because this was back in the 90s when there wasn't such a thing as believing in noise pollution and any of you that either grew up around trucking or grew around farming or just small town Nebraska as soon as you hear my Jake breaks you'll know what I'm talking about. sound of livestock haulers and green trucks coming through town all hours of the day every day hearing the Jake breaks as they come into town it's one of the parts of my childhood but long gone now because most towns now have uh, uh, prohibitions against Jake breaks so unless you live out in the middle of nowhere you don't hear this much anymore all right I'm gonna pull up here see if we get a full load here hopefully we do because then you'll you'll see why I chose this truck and how realistic it is give you a look at the interior real quick actually I'm gonna try to do this so you can see the shifter move actually let me get out of the yard this is what I'm talking about so now whew, got a little bit of weight behind me He's having trouble turning on the grass. Gotta get him onto the road here. There we go. Shift her through the gears, and off we go. If I do this right, you should be able to see, yeah, there you see that the, the shift actually moves. The gear shift lever actually moves. shot the other day and just dealing with a little residual from that. Not as bad as I had back in September, some of those times that I was recording. see there you can see the tachometer and the speedometer there on the dash I'm moving with the speed adjusting to the shifting of the gears as we slowly get up to speed here try to turn my camera so I can see what I'm going where I'm going I want you guys see the gear shift lever move at the same time
just Ooh. letting you guys enjoy the sound. Not much for me to say right now. Isn't this baby struggle to pull this loaded trailer up the hill here? Trailer might be a little bit much for this truck, but I like the truck, so I'm going to use it. cheese spawning down here <clears throat> yeah we're, we're good on milk the dairy will hold a hundred thousand I think after this this load will be close to 80 or 90 in there so didn't quite need it but we delivered it anyway thousand liters so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna loop around and check out the distillery and the brewery on the way out and that's gonna be a wrap for this video and this series don't worry like I said I have another series planned um, and my goal is to go beyond 15 episodes with that one I've already started recording I think I have two or three episodes already ready to go so if you haven't noticed, I've been posting all my videos on Wednesdays. I think I'm going to keep that schedule going as long as I can stay ahead on my recording. So hopefully I'll have one of those up next week ready for you on the new farm. That's all I'm going to tell you about. That's all you're going to know. you got to wait and see where we end up. Stops a lot faster when we're empty. Doesn't need as much jake break. Cut through this little path here. Let's see if I can remember. There's another road that comes across up here, and I miss the stop sign every time. There it is right there. No, it's not that one. It's up here in the trees, but I miss the stop sign every time. There it is. So yeah, cheese and milk and soybeans and whiskey and beer is how we made our money in this episode. Took us six years in the game to get to three quarters of a million dollars. And that's counting all the equipment upgrades and whatnot that we went through. So hopefully in the next one, we'll make ourselves millionaires. I think this truck will go all the way up to 70, I think it is. I'm going to go ahead and go for it just to show you guys. Yeah, eighth gear there. He's pulling hard, but we got to 70.
town here. There's the church. There's KFC. Hop the curb a little bit. Here's the distillery. I ended up going with a different distillery because I couldn't get the dried corn to ever work. So this one's called Glens Creek Distilling. We're going to jump out here. You can see there's nothing spawning because I have it automatically set to sell. We still have 18,000 liters of barley and 15,000 liters of corn in there. So that one's running well. Run over here and check. Um, so this brewery, the building looks the same, but it is a different mod. Um, this one, instead of doing the brands of beer, and we got 17,000 liters of water and 25,000 liters of barley. Um, instead of doing the brands of beer on this one, you can do wheat beer, barley beer, honey beer, or strawberry beer. We're obviously doing barley beer because we needed barley to make um, the whiskey too. I would have needed to do sugar beets to get vodka and sugar cane to get rum. So I decided not to do those. But hey, we almost made it to a million dollars and we survived the 80s and made it to the 90s. Hopefully, in the next series, we'll make it to the 2000s. But as always, everybody, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, then stick around because the next one's going to be even bigger and better. A lot of surprises in store. Um, a lot of lot more farming action. So as always, hit a subscribe to the channel, like the videos, um, hit the notification bell, and you'll get notified every time I post a video. But I've already let you know more a lot more often than not, you're gonna see my videos on Wednesdays. I'm throwing around the idea of doing a second uh, part-time series that I might post like one Saturday a month, um, but we'll see. It just kind of depends on how time goes in the personal life. But here, a nice long 29-minute video for you guys. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next series.